Hello and welcome to Tech Deals Blue Yeti Microphone Review. I'm going to be showing you all the features of this microphone today, talk about who should consider buying it, what makes it a nice microphone, maybe why you shouldn't consider it, an alternative suggestion, and a demonstration. I'm going to halfway through this video switch from recording using my overhead boom microphone to the Blue Yeti so you can see what it sounds like. The Blue Yeti digital microphone is a USB microphone. It does not work with mixers or other input devices. It plugs into the USB port of your computer, but that makes it very simple to configure and set up. Your onboard sound card or other uh, devices are not utilized. So if you have a machine perhaps with a cheap basic sound card, you want a nice microphone, you don't have to worry about it because it doesn't even use it. There is a headphone jack on the bottom, so you can plug in headphones and listen directly through this, not using your sound card as well, and you can also monitor yourself. There's a gain control on the back, and there is a four position switch on the back to change the pickup pattern of the microphone. You can have it be cardioid, single person user directly in front of you, stereo mode, which picks up a surrounding area in front of you. You can have omnidirectional where it picks up 360 degrees and interviewer mode bi-directional where it picks up just directly in front and directly behind. So you can put it on the desk facing another person and both of you can talk into it and it does not pick up the surrounding sides. That's nice. Most microphones are not configurable and so that's a very handy feature. There is a mute button right here on the front. When it is solid, it is on. When you press it and it is blinking, then it's muted. So when it's on, basically it acts as a power light as well and lets you know that it's working. This knob on the front is the volume control for the headphone jack, not the microphone itself. And as I mentioned, the gain and the actual pickup pattern controls are on the back. There is no external power required. It is completely powered via your USB port. It simply uses a standard USB cable included in the box from a micro USB connection to the computer. And it's a fairly long cable as well. You shouldn't need an extension unless you need it a considerable distance from your computer. The microphone comes in a bunch of different colors. I have the blackout edition here, as you can see from the box, but they have a variety of different colors. They have white, gold, blue, red, and several other options as well. Linked down in the video description below will be the link to the one I'm reviewing. But on that page on Amazon and also over on Newegg will be actually the buttons and the colors you can choose from. So when you follow that link, click each of the colors. I've noticed that the price varies at different times between the colors. Normally this retails for $129, but it's usually on sale, but not all the colors. Sometimes it's $89 to $99 for one or two of the colors, but $129 for others. And as I mentioned, there's bundles. This was a bundle with Assassin's Creed Origin. They also have a bundle down there with headphones and a pop filter. And there's another bundle with Ghost Recon Wildlands as well. Check the prices of each. You might find that the bundles cost no more than the microphones standalone, and you get an extra game or an extra set of headphones with the bundles. Now the microphone comes out of the box already attached to this desktop stand that you can see here. It works very well. If you have watched my recent 14 game review on the Acer Predator Helios 300 laptop or the 14 game review on the Acer Aspire E, both of those voiceovers were recorded using this microphone on the desk with the desk stand. Normally you want an isolation or shock mount for that sort of thing, but so long as you're not hitting the desk, it's actually not that bad. It is removable from the mount. You simply unscrew these two screws. It simply comes right out. You can then mount it on a shock mount or a boom arm or some other type of extension if you don't want to use the desk stand. But I suspect a lot of people will. It works very, very well. It's also fairly heavy. This is not a lightweight microphone and the stand has a good heft to it. You're not going to be just accidentally knocking this over unless you really hit it. So it's a good quality stand. The microphone feels really well built. It's actually quite impressive in person. The audio you're listening to me right now on is being recorded by an Audio-Technica AT875R boom microphone that is currently connected overhead. It's a $170 microphone. But of course, that's just the beginning when you buy such equipment. I've got the microphone. You need a cable that runs to the phantom power box. You need a phantom power box then another cable which runs to the computer. I have installed a sound card in my computer to make that sound a whole lot better. If you've been following my channel for a while, you saw that where I showed how much better the, sounds, the sound is with the sound card. I have a microphone boom arm and it's not a cheap one because it extends a full six feet over that direction to get it out of the shot. All told, there's about $350 invested between the microphone, the boom arm, the phantom power, the sound card, and the various cabling. 
While a lot of people may think, boy, $100 for a microphone sounds like a lot, it isn't compared to the cost of that. Of course, there's no boom arm and it's on the desk. But if you want to do podcasts, voiceover work, or perhaps even YouTube and you're okay to have the microphone on the desk like this, this may actually be all you need, or at least it would be a really nice thing to start off with. If I had to do my entire YouTube channel over again, starting back when I had zero subscribers, something like this, instead of all the fancy stuff I did with audio, would actually probably have been a smarter way to go. I have now turned the Blue Yeti microphone around and I am now recording on it. So the voice you're hearing right now is actually being picked up by this microphone. I've turned the overhead one off. Can you tell the difference? Is it better? Is it worse? Well, that's a personal choice. The best I can possibly do is simply record this video, first half with the overhead, second half with this, and you can make up your own mind between $350 worth of stuff and a $99 microphone, or at least what I paid for it in any case. Now, as I said before, it's mounted on the desk. Unlike the overhead microphone, which doesn't pick up any vibrations, if I hit the desk, can you pick that up? You probably hear a lot more of it than you do when the overhead mic is on, so don't hit the desk. Or, of course, take it off of the mount and put it onto some type of shock mount, but that just increases the cost. I don't have anybody else to talk with in the video where I could show you, for example, the, the omnidirectional sound options, but there are the four options on the back that you can change its pickup pattern. I'm currently using the cardioid pickup pattern, which is simply directly in front. Please note you speak into it with it standing up vertical. You don't talk actually into the top of the microphone because the pickups are around the side. As I mentioned before, do check the links down below and check out the bundle deals. You can see here, this is the Assassin's Creed Origin Edition. When I bought this bundle, it was the exact same price as the microphone without Assassin's Creed, so it made the game for free, essentially. On the day I filmed this video, it was not, it was more expensive, but the Ghost Recon bundle was the same price as the microphones without anything else. So again, check those out down below. Now, as far as the microphone itself goes, I'm actually quite happy with it. Is it perfect? No. Is it a $300, $500 microphone? Is it a super hypercardioid microphone of extreme quality? No. Does it work with mixers? No, of course not. It's USB and digital. You cannot change a lot of the settings with it. It's not highly configurable the way an analog microphone might be, but it's simple and easy to use. It does not depend upon your computer sound card. You don't have to worry about whether you have a good sound card or cheap sound card. It just plugs in, Windows detects it or Mac, automatically and there's no configuring. From an ease of use and get started now point of view, it's really, really nice. And based upon the build quality and the sound from the voiceovers I've done, I'm gonna keep using it. I like it. Like this video if you like it, share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with that big huge red button directly below. Questions and comments in the comment section. And as always, check out the links in the video description. Links to Amazon and Newegg for these microphones. Links to the Audio Technica, just so you guys can see what that is as well if you're interested. And also put a link to the microphone arm and all the other items that I have. You can see how expensive it gets to do a standard analog solution versus this nice solution right here. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.